Hey everybody, welcome back to Tomcat Air Guns, and welcome to episode two of the Tactical Barrier series. Uh, in episode one, I went over tactical barriers, how to build them, I went over some design considerations that you might think about, and I also covered how to build them for next to nothing, or maybe even free. So check out episode one for that information, I think it's going to be up in that corner. Uh, I also covered alternatives to shooting actual firearms uh, while using those tactical barriers, but getting those training skills in, and that's really what this series is all about. Alternatives to using real firearms that are a little bit safer, not maybe not as accurate, maybe more accurate, who knows, but just giving you an alternative that maybe you can do in your own backyard versus having to travel down to a range to use a real firearm. In that first series, I covered the uh, DPMS SBR CO2 powered BB rifle. This is going to be the lowest cost entry. And as each episode progresses, I'm going to basically cover a different rifle and talk about the pros and cons of that rifle. The price is probably going to go up, the accuracy is probably going to go up, but the features of it, such as the buttons being in the right place, um, you know, charging handle, you know, stuff like that actually doing something and functioning, that's going to go down. So that's a consideration for you, the shooter, to decide, hey, is this going to be the right rifle for me? And that's why I started this series with the BB rifle, is because it shared so many features with the real thing. Now, another option you might consider is um, airsoft and that's the they look like BBs but they're bigger they're I think seven millimeter and they're plastic round balls they're usually yellow or white um, that's another great option for training tactically and using barriers and such and not using real ammo not using your real gun and having that much higher level of safety not shooting bullets the downside to the airsoft, and I don't have anything against airsoft, I just, I'm not a fan of it. I don't like those little yellow balls being all over the yard. Um, with BBs, if I really wanted to, I could go out there with a magnet and pick them up. So I don't like the mess that airsoft makes, even the biodegradable BBs, uh, and I don't like the accuracy. Now, the accuracy on a BB gun is probably not much better. Uh, you're talking about Civil War type technology. You got a round ball going down a smooth tube and it's not accurate. Comes out of that barrel and just kind of wanders off. So that's the real downside to this BB gun. The biggest downside to this BB gun is the accuracy. For episode two, let me introduce you to the Sig Sauer MCX CO2 powered pellet rifle. It comes in 177 caliber, and as you can see, it's a little bit longer than its BB CO2 powered cousin. However, it does share a lot of the same length and features and form as the real thing. And depending on your training, that could be very important to you. It does come with one magazine. This is the magazine right here. And it'll just slide in like that. And inside that magazine, you can kind of see it right here, is a chain of pellets. Now you have to preload these, and they are kind of a pain in the butt to load. I'll get into that in just a moment. Uh, but they should be, I think they're 30 rounds, and if you want, you can buy, obviously, more magazines. And if you do that, yeah, 30 round magazine. If you buy this kit, I think this is $30, you get another, another magazine body and three more of these chains, which kind of will help your training to move along uh, with less interruption. As I stated, this is CO2 powered, but unlike its BB cousin, you're not gonna be using these little tiny CO2 cartridges. You're gonna be using the larger 88 or 90 gram CO2 cartridges that look like this. They've got this little threaded portion on the front end and they thread into the rifle. And they're usually about seven bucks a piece, give or take, depending on brand and where you're buying them. So there's a price difference right there that you really have to consider. Now these are, you know, sizable, so it's not one cartridge per magazine or anything like that. You're going to get mag after mag after mag after it, and it's going to last you for quite a while. That CO2 cartridge is hidden in the buttstock right here. Push this little button, take your, slide your stock off, and then you can unscrew your old CO2 or screw in a new one. 
and it's that easy. Slide that right back on and you're good to go. Now I have dropped this rifle and the C the, obviously the stock held up and the CO2 didn't burst or anything like that. So I do feel pretty confident in using it and being a little aggressive with it. Let's take a look at some of the features and similarities between this and the real thing. As I said, the buttstock is non-adjustable. It does have some sling attachments here, but in my opinion, that's quite a bit of strain on the tail end of this. And you've got a pressurized cylinder in here, so I'd be a little hesitant to use this for a sling attachment, but that's up to you. The grip looks like it can be swapped out with a standard AR grip if you don't like what it comes with. The safety is on both sides. Okay, has one selection, semi-automatic. Does not go into full auto like its uh, BB gun cousin. Um, charging handle works. The charging handle release does not work. Uh, the mag release on this side also does not work. And moving up, you've got a Picatinny rail on top. And then you've got the, what is this, the, uh, the key mod um, type of attachment system on your forward rail. So you can see here, I put a, uh, a Picatinny rail on the side for an accessory. I also put one on the bottom so I could put my forward grip in place. Um, the shroud is not removable, so you can't add a silencer, you can't do anything like that. But this thing's not too bad. It's a loud hand clap when it goes off. And then it comes with some open sights. Next I'm going to cover accuracy since that's the whole reason for episode two is we're going to move up a little bit in accuracy with each level. Uh, this is shooting a 177 caliber lead pellet down a rifled barrel. It's going to outshoot the BB rifle any day of the week without even thinking about it. Uh, but it is a 177 caliber and those, those little pellets are really susceptible to the wind. So if you're shooting in any kind of breeze and you'd be surprised how <laughs> a little breeze it's going to start blowing those pellets around a little bit. So that's something that you're going to have to just deal with. And to give you an idea of the accuracy, I went out and shot this target with both the BB rifle and this right here. And you can see the obvious difference. I mean, this is a shot of 10 and this is a shot of 10. And it's less than half, much less, maybe a quarter of the size of what the BB rifle is going to do. This was at 20 yards, so we're still talking about close range. We're not out at 40 or 50 yards. 20 yards, shot consecutively. So that's kind of what you can expect. Why that's important is now when you're going through your movements at your tactical barrier and you're coming up and you're, and you're shooting, with this, you're going through the motions and you're getting that muscle memory down. With this, you can start working on your accuracy and those really fine motor skills once you come up on target and go to take your shot. And that's why I think having a more accurate rifle comes into play and will help you out with your training. Price point on this is $190. It's actually about the same as this. I think this is actually $190. So you have that scale of weighing like, hey, which one do I want for $190? But keep in mind that you're not using these cheaper little CO2s or the BBs, you're using more expensive large CO2s. Like I said, I think these are about seven bucks a piece. And now you're using pellets. So the fact that you're using pellets means uh, your safety factor just drops down just a, just a notch because now you have something that's more accurate, it's gonna fly further, it's gonna come out at a faster speed. So keep that in mind with where your training at. Let's take a look at loading the magazines, which as I said, can be kind of a pain in the butt. Um, here's the chain. This one's about half loaded right now. And that chain is going to go inside the magazine in this little track. Uh, to load the magazine, we take these little pellets. You see how small these are, so they get they can get away from you. What I like to do is I like to load them in, and we'll only do about five of them. And push them down with my thumb and then you need to use this special little tool it's best to do this on a hard surface and what you do is you just push it down it's got this little uh, nipple on it and that pushes them all down to the exact right spot that they're supposed to be so i'll go in and i'll load up all these i'll line them all up load them all up and then i'll go in and and punch them all down and that way 
I'm done and I know that my magazines are loaded and I have at least four rounds where I don't have to be worried about loading these magazines. Once you've got your chain all loaded up, you can insert it into the mag. You got these little uh, teeth, They'll go, those go up and make sure the head of the pellet points towards the front of the magazine. And you just work it on into the mag and run it around and it should come right back around. I like to line up my pellet to make sure it's coming out with that first shot instead of making the, uh, the rifle work at all. And there you go, your magazine is loaded. With my magazines loaded, I know I can head to the range and I've got 30 shots before I have to do a mag drop and slap a new one in. Now you can see the difference in the magazine size, okay, especially with thickness and width and everything, it's quite a bit different. So if you're used to using a vest with say a mag holder, this may not work in it. Um, you may be able to use one if it's more of an elastic type where you can kind of stretch it, slap this in, that might give you that little level of realism. If you're considering getting this, I would recommend getting the second magazine kit because what comes with a gun is only one magazine and one chain. So after your 30 rounds is up, you're going to be back loading up your, going through the whole process of loading up that chain, you know, pulling it out, putting it back in and all that. If you get the magazine kit, you'll get the second magazine case and you will have now four of these chains that you can load up all at the same time. So that's going to reduce your downtime and allow you to have a little more fun and get a little more training in. Speaking of training, let's head outside and use this with the tactical barriers. All right, so we've arrived at the range, the range, in other words, my backyard, and um, I've got my target down there. It's right around 20 yards, and uh, I want to talk real quick about safety. Um, going to do some type of training like this. You're not only pointed and shooting down range, but you're also sweeping to turn, and when you run, you're running back this way, so you have a chance of pointing your muzzle in this direction. So you've got really 360 degrees that you have to make sure everything, everyone is safe from being injured or damaged or anything. Um, I've got that today, so no problem there. Uh, prescription is, I'm gonna run down there and touch that first flag, run back here, shoot my uh, mag out, do a mag change, run down there, touch the flag again, come back and shoot until my mag's empty. Uh, and that'll be my, my uh, practice for today. I'm not so much concerned about you know, my grouping down range. I'm not very familiar with shooting this gun, so I expect it to be a little open. I may even miss the box. Um, I'm more concerned about using the rifle and going through that technique. That's what this is about. It's about using this as a substitute for the real thing. With that being said, let's get rolling. Extra mag. Fell into my pocket. That should be 30 rounds. <laughs> All right, hope you enjoyed that. Um, so I'm back at the shop and I counted my shots on this box. And I see either 56 or 58 holes here. Uh, two of them might be two pellets going in right next to one another and it looks like one hole. So I'm not quite sure, but I definitely hit the box the majority of the time, which is awesome. I don't think I would have got that with the BBs. I think I might have hit it about half the time. So these are my two magazines and I want to make sure that every round was fired and I haven't opened these yet. So let's pull them out and, and take a look. 
And this one here, it, oh, I got one right here that didn't fire. And so that's 59 shots. <laughs> uh, and this one is clear. So I had one round that didn't go off. And I bring that up because this chain was what I used to sight in and set my, uh, um, set my sights and everything. And this didn't fire around. And in playing with this, even before I made this video, I've noticed a round, maybe two rounds, maybe four in a chain that aren't going off. Now, maybe over time, as this chain kind of wears in a little bit and gets worn down, that might change. That might become a non-issue and every pellet goes down the barrel. But for me, for right now, I'm just seeing this, you know, everything's still kind of new and I'm noticing a couple of rounds not being fired. Um, not a big deal for me and for the way that I'm training. Um, like I said, I hit the box a majority of the time and I wasn't really concerned about a group right here. I just wanted to hit the box. So I'm more focused on me and my shooting and my movements and how those sights are lining up to my eye and all that. So to me, this is very valuable. And I think the increase in accuracy is really awesome when you compare it to the BB gun. I'm willing to overlook the difference in magazine, the difference in buttons a little bit. I'm willing to overlook that as a training tool. Uh, and at just over $200 with the extra magazine, you're not out a whole lot of money. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a little bit about maybe an option for you. And uh, as always, thanks for watching and happy shooting.